Yeah, I think McConnell, he he was genuinely against all cannabis issues. Like he didn't he doesn't yeah. like the cannabis. He was an old school dinosaur when it came to yeah. uh not supporting the industry, not liking uh cannabis at all, not wanting these issues brought up. He was gonna stonewall everything. Hey everyone, welcome to our latest Trade to Black podcast. Hope you all had a great week. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Today's podcast, or should say tonight's podcast, we break down the biggest developments for the week, what you should be paying close attention to. Obviously, chaos going on in Washington this week with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy ousted. So we want to dive into the names that we think are the leaders and what you should be aware of. No other better people to bring in with their expertise. Anthony Verrill, good to see you. Hope you had a good week. I had a great week. It was a little bit of a stunner when the... uh... McCarthy announcement broke, but yeah, aside from that, it was a good week. Yeah, we talked about that in our live stream earlier this week, but uh, I still can't get over that. Benjamin Smith, our uh, lead financial writer, Benjamin A. Smith, good to see you. Hey, good to see you guys. Hey, good to see you, Benjamin A. All right. Um, all views on the Trade to Black podcast, the guests on this podcast are purely opinion. You should not tr- uh, treat any opinions expressed by us or guests as investment advice. And the views on this podcast are solely intended to be informational and are not investment advice. Okay, so let's begin off the top. As I said, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, as we know, was ousted, causing chaos in Congress this week. We touched on some of the leading candidates that could be uh, appointed as the new speaker. So let's dive into that, Anthony. Let's begin. Jim Jordan, who is he and what should we be aware of when it comes to Jim Jordan? So Jim Jordan's an incendiary character in Washington, to say the least. I mean, he's all a lot of times referred to as an agent of chaos. Um, he's someone that's aligned with Trump and the MAGA Republicans. Um, I actually agree with him on a lot of his policy and a lot of the things that, yeah, he's, he's a conservative. I mean, he's, He's got a decent head on his shoulders. He can lean towards the radical side of the right, but he's, he, I, I think he's overall, he's a, he's a good guy. Um, that being said, he's loathed by the Democrats. He's never voted yes on a single cannabis bill. Um, and like we just alluded to, he's known as an agent of chaos in Washington. Um, it's somebody that I really wouldn't want to get the speakership, um, but I don't think where it's going to be a function of, what do the people want? It's going to be a function of who do the Republicans think it's going to be the best to do the job moving forward. And I think in many people's eyes in the house, he is that guy. Hmm. Ben, you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I think the the thing with Jim Jordan is uh, he's a high ranking member of the house for the Republicans, uh, you know, chair of the uh, house uh, judiciary committee. Uh, there uh, is former of uh he was formerly on the House Oversight Committee, so senior ranking, ranking member there. So I think he has a lot of standing within the Republicans. Uh, he he is aligned with the MAGA base on in a lot of ways, but he's not like a uh, you know a crazy zealot, if you want to call it, like maybe some <laughs> some of the other members in there, uh, like Marjorie Taylor yeah. Greene or, or whatnot. But so I think he has a lot of standing with Repu- Republicans, and I think um, in a lot of ways, obviously the Republicans control the agenda because they have the majority in the house. Yeah. So, uh, if Jim Jordan is not to get in, it means that what five or six Republicans vote against that. If, uh, they vote in, in a unitary fashion, then, uh, you know, Democrats can't, can't stand in the way it's It's going to be Jim Jordan. And that's what we're hearing. We're hearing a lot of Jim Jordan as being the leading candidate right now. Hmm. Does he have like, is this a Mitch McConnell? Like he's, he's not a big fan or uh, um, advocate for cannabis, but could we run into like a stone wall that we, you know, if he's appointed as house speaker that we had with, with Mitch McConnell? I don't think so. Um, I really don't think so. I mean, like a lot of people are alluding to safe banking really as much as we all think it's a cannabis bill. I mean, it really is about section 10. And the language that's being put in there. And I mean, if it applies to both sides and it's bipartisan, gets bipartisan support. I mean, I don't think that the speaker, the new speaker is going to stonewall. He's going to have a lot more things on his plate and a lot of other things to worry about than uh, than safe. Hmm. Yeah, I think McConnell, he he was genuinely against all cannabis issues like he didn't. He doesn't like yeah. the cannabis. He was an old school dinosaur when it came to yeah. Uh, not supporting the industry, not liking uh, cannabis at all, not wanting these issues brought up. He was going to stonewall everything. I, I don't get that from Jim Jordan necessarily, uh, at least not that I've heard or researched about. How old he is has, he? Do, you, do we know? I'm sorry? Jim Jordan, I'd have to guess he's 60 something. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, so Ben. He has sorry. voted against every sort of every cannabis bill, uh, state banking twice. Uh, he's voted against all those bills for, for sure, but he, I don't uh, see a lot of research where he's uh, verifiously opposed to, uh, these issues out like outright. 
Um, he, he's just mm. obviously not a supporter because he doesn't vote against it, but he's not, I don't, I don't think he's on a Mitch McConnell level. I, and of course you have section 10, which is a lot more than about cannabis. It's about guns, oil, you know, other issues that are sort of, uh, supersede what, you know, just what cannabis is. Hmm. Agent of chaos. I wouldn't mind wow. that being my reputation if I was a politician. That's actually not a bad Twitter handle. No. Agent of chaos. All right. Secondly, Steve Scalise. Uh, again, I'll start with you, uh, Anthony. Who is he and what should we be aware of? I know I know less about him than I do Jim Jordan. I mean, I know that he's more of a moderate uh, mo- moderate member of the uh, GOP. Um, he was shot, actually, and hospitalized a couple of years back. Um, and currently he's undergoing treatment for cancer, which a lot of people really thought that would be the reason why he wouldn't really be up to the job or be able to give it full attention um, that it's going to need to be right now. Um, his view on cannabis, I think he's somewhere in the middle. Um, right. He's not really for it. He's not really against it. I think it'd be a nothing burger um, for him. But I think he's less apprehensive to it than Jim Jordan. Yeah. You know much about him, Ben? Uh, not really, other than the fact that he's a conservative. Uh, it's not somebody I follow too closely. He did vote for the marijuana research bill uh, in 2022. So his record is a little bit better than Jim Jordan in that regard. But uh, uh, everything else, he's voted against that. So I, I don't yeah. view him as being a, a, a very solid candidate on, on the issues. He gets an F rating from normal. Uh, Jim Jordan does as well. So, Yeah, well, I am seeing there's a lot of Jim Jordan's name being floated around right now uh, about him being appointed. You guys think ultimately that's what's going to happen? Uh, I think there's a good chance of it happening. Um, I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen right now. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in Washington. I don't even... The more I think about it, the fact that Donald Trump is endorsing Jim Jordan might work against him um, to a degree. I mean, you got to take into consideration it was eight MAGA Republicans that just ousted McCarthy um, from the speakership. So I don't know how much influence they want Donald um, having as it relates to the House. But I mean, I think it's completely up in the air right now. This is all pure speculation. Yeah. Um, Go ahead, Ben. No, I was going to say, if I had to bet, if I was a betting man, I would say Jim Jordan's probably in the lead just because he's a high ranking member, as I stated earlier. And, um, you know, it's it's harder to get support for if you're not a high ranking member within the party for obvious reasons. Now, they may have to play ball <clears throat> if the Democrat, if he, if he doesn't have enough votes and it goes to different rounds and there's not enough support on both sides. They may have to go to a lesser candidate that's more palatable to, to each. But right now, Jim Jordan does have a lot of standing within the Republican House. So, yeah, you know, uh, you, you I think you have to give him the edge right now. Yeah. All right. Um, there was a earnings call on uh, with Tilray that you were part of earlier this week, uh, Anthony, where uh, Irwin Simon talked about how he felt that rescheduling and if there is some sort of like legislation towards safe or even federal legalization won't happen for two years. Again, we touched on this earlier this week, but um, Again, I, 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 I don't think rescheduling is going to be two years, don't you think? No, I don't think at all. I think it happens sometime in 2024. Like I've said, I think it happens as early as March. It could happen as late as August. Um, but I don't think it's going to coincide with the election or happen post. Yeah. Don't know why he said that, but clearly he's talking to some people. But do you think there's an agenda? But, I mean, saying not really, years? because once let's I mean, let's think it through once safe. <laughs> not safe rescheduling once rescheduling goes out of the dea there's going to need to be rules and regulations drafted mm-hmm. i mean there's going to be a time lag in there i'm sure there's going to be someone that fucking slaps a lawsuit against it or something like that i mean he could be right it could we could be sitting here two years from now on the cusp of everything actually getting implemented and enacted into the system well i hope that's not the case one person we're actually we're trying to get on through uh, rob Seacrest and his political contacts is matt gates and you actually have a contact as well we're hoping to get him on that would be incredible to see what his take is because uh, obviously a big uh, advocate for our cannabis but uh came as a surprise but needless to say for every cannabis investor they're uh pro camp gates right now yeah i mean it was <clears throat> i would like to get him i wish he was running for speaker um i mean he's pro cannabis he's he's spoken out for it um, I was hoping that he was kind of just in his own self-interest boosting, ousting McCarthy um, so he could take the spot. Would be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's usually why you do something like that, unless you yeah. just wanted to cause chaos. Yeah. Um, each week, uh, we're now starting. We actually, after a couple of weeks, getting a lot of attention. We have a weekly editorial uh, story on thedalesreport.com. Ben, you're writing about the top seven developments for cannabis, which is getting a ton of attention. So 
without going into full detail, the full seven developments, what are some of the uh, outlines of this week's developments that you maybe want to top line pertaining to the story? Yeah, obviously we touch on all the the big stories, and that would include uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, getting ousted. That obviously that's a big one because it's very important who uh, comes in after him, whether he supports the cannabis issues or not. And uh, of course, we touched up on that. Uh, of course, uh, we we'll talk about Tilray earnings, and uh, you know, Erwin Simon. He was interviewed on CNBC after giving his thoughts on the cannabis landscape and where things are going. We touched on that as well. And we also talked about, you know, some other items that didn't really receive uh, as much attention. For example, um, a poll of affirming that most uh, people in Ohio plan to vote yes on the REC Cannabis Initiative. And that's yeah. important because Ohio is a very big state and it's a very important state. And, yeah. you know, th this would be, you know, uh, not quite as akin to Florida going REC, but it, it would be pretty close. I mean, they it, it's a very they got three major cities in there. Uh, big population. Uh, this would be pretty big for the industry. And also we talk about uh, Lubbock, you know, uh, Lubbock, Texas, you know, mid-sized town in Texas. And the importance here is that this would be the first significant community in that state to yeah. the most populous to, um, to basically decriminalize cannabis. And of course, you know, cannabis is not uh, legal in Texas or, or not recreational uh, not recreational endowed there. So it's an important development. It's a small chip in the, in, in the armor, but, uh, it, you know, the regulations are coming down there. Ohio getting a lot of attention right now, isn't it? We're at the conference as far as growth States that Maryland, obviously we had a good podcast this week with Anthony Coniglio from new Lake. Um, his firm actually has one of the biggest MJ REITs, but one of the things he was mentioning Anthony was when they lend money and they're looking at specific States, they look at States that have a well, foundation of uh medical uh support a uh, medicinal on the cannabis side but uh um when you look at texas if there comes a day of 30 million people only three licenses and that pretty much could be a huge medicinal state given that all the veteran support it would uh it would attract i mean i think texas will be as big as florida um or texas could be as big as florida granted texas doesn't get the tourism that florida does but texas yeah. definitely has the population it's got the it, it, it's got the addressable market that could potentially look like what uh, look like Florida looks like, at least from a medical perspective. Yeah. All right. So that's the top seven that will be posted. Actually, when's that going on live on the uh, website, Ben? Uh, it goes live every Friday afternoon. Once we get the every data, Friday, yeah, populate, we have a data table in there for the uh, week's biggest movers. Once we get that data in, it usually goes out sometime after five. Nice. Uh, I also have the top five psychedel uh, psychedelic developments for the week story on the dalesreport.com, which is released every Saturday morning. So let's switch to psychedelics. Big news this week from California Governor, uh, Governor, excuse me, Gavin Newsom, who signed a bill allowing MDMA psilocybin prescriptions uh, if and when the feds do reschedule. Uh, this is not getting a lot of attention, but huge news for the space, uh, gentlemen, because... Uh, this this clearly is is turning a lot of heads amongst government officials. Yeah, this is yeah, I mean, this is laying the groundwork. Go ahead, ben. Gavin Newsom yeah. lays the groundwork for MDMA psilocybin assisted therapy <clears throat> uh, to be implemented in the state when it is federally legal. And of course, we just had the MAPS yeah. data come out, which was really obviously really strong. And there's going to be a new drug application soon from Max. MAPS uh, be uh, Public Benefit Corporation. And if that gets approved by the FDA and then they subsequently uh, reschedule MDMA uh, from the schedule list down to, say, three, like cannabis, uh, like they want to do with cannabis, then this could be, you know, this could be legal. And they're setting the groundwork for that. So it it's quite possible that California could be a um, yeah, assisted therapy hub for some of these psychedelic medicines going forward. And that's what Gavin Newsom has done. Nothing is going to take place right away, but he's setting the groundwork for all these important measures that are happening down the road. Yeah. Where are we at with that? Like it's, I know we had Cybin on, they had a great run last week, by the way. Um, yeah. A lot of people based off of us, uh, the Steve Cohen investment, you actually had a post earlier this week, looking at compass pathways, like it's falling on hard times after the, uh, uh, announcement of the stock purchase back in the summer, but are we, it's, it's like this space, the maps news came out was really, really promising, but I was thinking more would come to fruition. There'd be more attention pertaining to that. Like, do you think there's more to come, uh, in the near term future? Because 
like I said, that data was promising, but it really didn't get a lot of attention from what I was uh, originally anticipating. Um, Anthony? Yeah, I, I think what happens is basically what you saw is a sell the news dynamic. We got a little bit of pop in uh, ancillary companies that would benefit like you know, Numinous, for example, and then it dropped right down. Uh, even Compass sort of ran up. I don't know if it was specifically for the data, but it ran up a little bit before from the low end of the range to the top end of the range. And now it's seeing at the all time lows. So I think uh, what you're seeing here is a dynamic that you see in a lot of biotech stocks, even outside of psychedelics, where uh, the news cycles are so long <clears throat> and take yeah. so long to actually happen that people tend to sell news or so when price action goes up, they're, they're selling that because they know that there is no ca the catalyst table is extended. And that's yeah. what we saw here. And I mean, obviously, it's great news for the long term, but there's still a lot of moving parts that have to happen before, you know, revenue starts coming in before the, you know, the real uh, near term catalysts start to propel these stocks and uh, the value of these stocks going forward. Still got a couple of years pertaining to that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a long ride. I mean, a lot of these companies were talking about seeing actual product in market 2027. Um, that's it's a ways off. Um, I know. That's, it's, I mean, if you can ride the cycles and trade the cycles, great. Or just buy and forget about it um, and just not uh, just not really look at the position. But yes, this is a this is going to be a long ride um, being in the psychedelic sector. Yeah, I think especially it, with macro too, like you, you've seen the biotech oh, industry, yeah. uh, you know, sort of XIB has gotten decimated. It's gotten decimated. So yeah. how is psychedelics, uh, you know, a promising company like uh, Compass Pathways going to hold up in, when macro is weak, when XIB is weak, and then, uh, you know, the sector is going down and then you have a pop. I mean, that, that's just ripe to be sold because they're not going to even announce their first tranche of data until 2024. Yeah, I was wrong, by the way. It's not XIB, it's XBI is the uh, is the biotech ETF that's gotten killed. Yeah, don't look now, don't look at now, guys. But a tie life sciences has dropped to a dollar forty five. And that's off. It's, and that's off its lows. What was its lows? Uh, about 120? Yeah, about 15%, really? about 15 percent away from where it is right now. What was the IPO? Was it 16? Uh, around there. I think it was 15. Wow. Somewhere between 12 and 15. What's your I mean, take it's, on it's, it's attention? It's purely it's it's purely attention. I mean, there's the these these are boom and bust. Like Ben said, yeah. these are, they're cyclical on news. Yeah. It's can't believe how much that's fallen though. But you know, what's the percentage share that they own in Compass again? Is it 19%? 20, somewhere 2023, 20, 20, between 20 and 25%. Um, they own of Compass. Yeah. You also, also like a high interest rate environments are very bad for uh, companies that expect yeah. cash flow out in the future. Uh, that's pretty well yeah. known. So, uh, first of all, it's harder for them to raise capital, it makes the cost of capital higher but also uh, decreases the value of their expected future uh, cash flows in the future, right? So um, the, the, it reduces the, their, their, the, you know, their present value, essentially. So you don't want to be buying these stocks generally in high interest rates environments when no. their cash flows are expected way out in the future. And this is uh, sort of a, a drag on the sector right now, I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for a DCF model, the worst thing you can do is throw in there an 8 to 10% interest rate. God forbid you have the model for it. Like that'll decimate your returns. One thing I wanted to circle back, I know you talked about this week a couple of times, Anthony and Anthony Cognigli was saying that too, but maybe break it down for people that are not really aware and feel free to go back and forth you guys. But what involves section 10 pertaining to the cannabis industry and why is that getting, I guess, something that people need to pay a lot of attention to that don't understand it? Yeah, it's got a, it's got, um, it's got provisions around AML laws, around other industries that are big lobbies in Washington, guns, alcohol, gas, oil, oil and gas, energy, um, that, that set up certain provisions around their banking um, that are advantageous for those industries. So, so, I mean, if we can push cannabis forward while also giving them an olive branch, um, it's a win-win. Yeah. Another important thing that was brought up was footnotes. That's <laughs> something that investors really need to pay attention to when reading uh, any kind of earnings report, but uh, footnotes was definitely brought up front and center this week in some of our conversations based on some of the reports as these companies have done. Yeah, I mean, I think that's important. I think Ben will mimic what I'm about to say. And I mean, their companies, companies can hide and just jam shit into an earnings report and put it somewhere that you're not expecting it and just hide it. So not a lot of people read it, 
they're still disclosing it, but it's not really going to be common fact uh, moving forward. Yeah, that's yeah, for even sure. Even when you read the filings, so, you know, a couple months back, I did, uh, you know, a debt cliff uh, story where it talked about, you know, the impending, you know, debt uh, obligations of, of the top MSOs. And a lot of those, if you read the filings are like little footnotes in the filings, right? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, obviously the cash uh, balance sheet is, is there. Uh, the cash table. And then if you go on the footnotes, it's like, oh yeah, we owe $75 million in 2024 in, in yeah. February, 2024. So you have to really pay attention to the debt obligations of these companies and how their revenues were derived. Were they one-time items? You know, Sometimes you get huge investment gains based on cash that's deployed elsewhere. That's not part of the core operations of the business. So uh, yeah, you really got to be, got to really be attuned to you know how the business is running, where the cash is coming from. 100%. Don't look now, but it's October the 8th already. And we are T minus, what is it? Three and a half weeks before earnings season kicks in four weeks. Yeah. GTI uh, yeah, announced uh, they're, they're coming out in about a month. No, wait, November 8th, I think, yeah. Anthony. Is it yep, November, 8th? November 8th? No, November 8th kicks off. Huh? GTI is usually Things one of the look first for. ones of the majors to kick off, right? Yeah. GTI is usually the first to kick it off. Might as well start yeah. with the best and then work our yeah. way back. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, there's going to be a lot of movement. Like all, everything's lining up to see some major change pertaining to the U.S. market. Canopy, obviously, we were going to sit down, have some conversations with David Klein to talk about a real understanding of what Canopy USA is going to look like. Uh, our viewers are absolutely loving the fact of uh, <laughs> how much attention and love Anthony you're now giving about SNDL. Uh, that's getting a ton of Don't attention. Don't call it Sundial. But, um, right? Morons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like this, uh, I, I think is going to be an interesting month coming up as far as earnings seasons. And like I said earlier this week, I think if they can keep the status quo from what we saw in the summertime, um, I think they were just inching closer to what we could see uh, out of Washington and keep the overall interest level front and center pertaining to this industry. Yeah. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta look at the market as the, the way it is. I mean, the long-term uh, appreciation potential of U S cannabis stocks is there. Obviously once you get, you know, schedule three, if it comes to pass, I mean, that that's just going to boost the, uh, the cash flows tremendously. I think it was actually Kim Whit Rivers went on CNBC and she mentioned something like over the last two years, they paid because of, of schedule one and the undue taxation yeah. that they pay there. They paid like $230 million of, of extra tax. Oh, yeah. Would have, if it was just a normal tax rate, something like 223 oh, yeah. million or what's Boris said in the past. Was it over three? It's over three. Wild. Yeah. Two eighty is big. It's very big for, for the fundamental, for the fundamental nature of these companies. Cash flow profiles just completely turn on their head yeah. for a lot of these companies. Anyways, we will uh, see how we uh, uh, roll. Obviously this week, top seven developments for the week is uh, live on the website, the Dales report.com including our top five psychedelics developments for the week, every Friday afternoon and Saturday morning. Gents, uh, happy football season. I should say on Sunday, got any uh, good picks that you're thinking of? I think the Dolphins are going to absolutely beat the living pants off of the Giants. Um, they might Probably put up another. They might put up another seventy. Guess we will know once this goes live. Any other notable games? Dallas, San Francisco, Sunday night. I'm not touching that, but I'm definitely going to be watching it. Should be a good. I keep game. thinking that that's going to be defensive. That's going to be an under. Uh, it's only forty five and a half. I I just have yeah. a sneaky suspicion it's going to be a defensive like nineteen sixteen so, type of game. The Niners have scored 30 plus in every game this season. Have they? And they're, yeah. And they're at home. Um, I, the only bet that I'm probably going to make is that Dak throws an interception. <laughs> I could see that easily happening. Wow. You're really taking risks this week. The Giants or the Dolphins over the Giants and Dak throwing an interception. I mean, I took the Bears live last night, minus uh, or three nights on Thursday, minus two and a half. Um, so, I mean, it's. Uh, it's ups and downs. I don't know. Like some part of me feels like the the Niners could win in a blowout. Believe it or not, I'm gonna take Buffalo. Uh, Are I'm you? Take Buffalo in in London. Yeah, they'll they should be they should beat up on the Jags. I bought points. Jacksonville to keep it within twelve points. 
which I think was uh, they can do. Like Jacksonville's been there back to back weeks in London. It's big time zone change. They've got a big history of playing in overseas. So I think it's a trap game. I wouldn't bet on that game. And we hit the Phillies Marlins bet, which was good. We hit the Phillies Marlins bet. I, I don't know. Sure. I don't know if it, it was under the uh, under the flu or anything like that. It might have just hit because it hit. But uh, whatever, whatever works, man. That's all I care about. I mean, yeah, sick sick teams don't score points. Would they lose seven one? Yeah, I turned the TV on after put my daughter bed. It was three nothing, and all of a sudden I saw the bases loaded. I was like, "Come on, base hit, give Get me something." Slam. They get four five nothing. First pitch reliever comes in, boom, and I'm like, "Okay, I can go to bed." Yeah, money in the bank, that's for sure. Um, all right, gents, enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Awesome, talk to you guys. What's up, everyone? So what'd you think of the interview? Are there any more questions you want us to ask? Then leave a comment below on information that you want to learn more of. Make sure to share this video with your network and smash that like button. And most importantly, subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.